This is Gerardo Del Real with Resource Stock Digest. Joining me today is the president and CEO of Alianza Minerals, Mr. Jason Weber. Jason, how are you? Doing very well, Gerardo. Nice to talk to you again. It's good to have you back on. It's been a few weeks. Gold is convincingly now over 2,000, trading at about 2,030 as we speak. Silver is flirting with the $30 level. You have finished, I believe, the drilling program at Horse Thief, and you had some important news um, as well here earlier today. So I wanted to talk about both the completed drill program and the pending assays, and of course, Um, the appointment of a new VP of Exploration, a well-known name in the space. Can you provide some context? Yeah, it's uh, it's been uh, obviously a really busy time for us. And, um, you know, when you're looking at uh, the opportunities that uh, are in front of you when you come into a bull market, we, you know, we have a pretty good project portfolio, but I'm always looking to add to it. And, uh, you know, with that, when you add to the portfolio, you also have to start looking for partners for the projects in it. So bringing Rob on to, to help out in that respect is uh, really going to allow us to just do more uh, with our business model, both bring in new projects, build that pipeline up, but also find partners to fund exploration on those projects, which, of course, the ultimate goal is making a discovery so the, the more active exploration projects we have on the go the better it is for shareholders the more opportunities uh, we get for discovery so uh, bringing rob on made complete sense my my plate was full uh, bringing rob on now just gives us that extra ability to uh to uh generate ideas take advantage of opportunities for those that aren't familiar with Rob Duncan, can you provide a little bit of his background? Because Mr. Duncan is, uh, you know, we're talking over three decades, if I'm not mistaken, of, of, of experience in the space. Yeah, and I, I've known Rob for a very long time. We actually worked together um, back in uh, oh, the late uh, 2000s um, at, at Rimfire Minerals. So we brought Rob on to, to be essentially... Uh, our second VP of exploration there. His title was manager of exploration. He was uh, earlier in his career, obviously. So he uh, he basically split the the VPX role though with our our vice president of exploration at the time. And uh, and uh, you know Rob's a very uh, very smart geo. He's been involved in exploration at all levels. He's been involved with uh, taking um, projects through the EA, he, you know the environmental assessment process. Uh, and he's, you know, run grassroots early stage projects. And I think probably most important to me is he's, he's very familiar with the uh, uh, project generator business model and, and understanding what kind of projects you need and what kind of projects the uh, prospective partners are going to want to see and then having that ability to present the data to track somebody like that. So, yeah, Rob's uh, he's got a, a, a Master's of uh, Science and Geology a degree from UBC, very smart guy, lots of experience. It's uh, and as I said, uh, you know, personally, I've known Rob for a very long time, so it's a great bet for us. Speaking of projects, uh, drilling completed at Horse Thief. Uh, gotta believe you're excited. I know there's a lot, a lot of eyes um, on the stock and waiting for results. How is that coming along, and how'd you feel about the program? Yeah, I think we've uh, we've got lots of encouragement from the the holes we've drilled so far, and you know the first three holes were from the Horse Thief North and Horse Horse Thief South target areas, which were the areas that, that had previously been drilled uh, by other operators back in the '80s. Uh, we knew that there was quote unquote smoke, uh, low grade uh, gold intersections over you know feet and meters uh, in width. Uh, we, our hope was that it was indicating that below uh, below that mineralization, there would uh, it might be indicating a, a bigger, you know, potentially economic gold deposit. Uh, in the drilling so far, that has not been the case. Hmm. But um, what it tells us, so and we, we've only got part of the, the results. We've Correct. got the gold numbers for the first three holes. We don't have any of the multi-element ICP, which is where the vector elements come in for us. So these are the uh, 
elements that might be associated with gold mineralization, uh, arsenic, um, moly, antimony, some of these other mineral or metals that will help point us to a hotter part of the system. And um, when we get that data, that's when we can start looking at what we've done and say, okay, we need to move this direction or it's deeper, lateral, uh, that sort of thing. And with the 10 holes we've drilled, they're really widely spaced. We're really testing a large area of the property. So the fact that, you know, we didn't get an ore body in these two, these two areas really doesn't concern me at all. We've got lots of room to host and we've, we're, we've tested you know, five target areas. What we really needed to see, especially on the holes to the east of, of these three that we've reported so far, is that, um, that the one, the carbonate package that um, hosts that, the targets at Horse Seat North and Horse Seat South is continuous to the east. We know it outcrops again in the stallion area, in the very eastern edge of the project. Uh, we can see that in outcrop. But uh, underneath the volcanic cover in the sort of the more central part of the property, uh, the geophysics data told us the carbonates uh, were to be found at depth and we had to drill that to, to find out. We did. They're altered. Uh, we do see some pyrite mineralization in, in some of those carbonates. So those are all very encouraging signs that, one, the system's got some size. It's uh, continuous for uh, a, a large, over a large area. It gives us lots of room to look. And uh, when you start piecing it all together, once we get uh, all the data, we should be have a better idea of, how to vector, where to go, what to follow up on. I mean, it's for us, a successful drill program is, is getting a good hit on one or two holes. And then, you know, we build off that. So uh, we're still very, very encouraged about what we've seen in, in the remaining seven holes. Um, it's, uh, it's a really neat, geologically really neat area. Uh, we're seeing some really interesting things in the drilling. So, uh, yeah, I'm 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 really excited to to see what the the remaining holes bring. But the nature of this deposit type is that we aren't likely to see visible gold. So it's really going to be we take in what we can see out of the drilling, and the lab tells us that yeah, it's it's gold bearing or not. So it's it's very difficult to to predict until we get a handle on the system and what we're doing with. At this point, it's really tough for us to predict. Uh, how well something's going to run or not. But we know there's a gold-bearing system there. It's just how big is it going to be and, and, uh, and, and how, can, how can we vector on it. So, yeah, it's, uh, but like I say, it's, it's been pretty interesting uh, seeing the, the different holes in the different areas and, and some of the differences amongst them. And the pending assays you're anticipating the next week or two, is that correct? Oh, I wish I could say that with <laughs> Gerardo. It's uh, it's been you know when we first talked to the labs, it was they were talking a month turnaround, and then last week when I talked to them, they were saying six weeks turnaround, and you know our first set of results was actually more than six weeks. So um, between you know lab shutdown and COVID and everything, they're really behind the eight ball and, and trying to get things uh, caught up. So they have said they are running. 24-7 shifts now with efficiency uh, to try to bring back some of that backlog. But I, I don't, um, I you know, August 15th is the absolute earliest we could see any results in our hands. And, you know, we have to do our Q, QA, QC and that sort of thing on them. So you know, I'm I'm thinking later in August is, is really more, more realistic. So it sounds like sit tight. Yeah, it's frustrating because... You know, we had hoped originally when we we designed this program that we'd actually have some results in hand right. that we'd be able to vector off. But, you know, we're done our 10 holes. We've packed up, drills on to this, its next job, and, uh, and we hadn't even seen a result yet. So that's just the way it goes. I mean, when the gold price started to move, uh, people, you know, other companies were able to finance. It really created a sort of a, a, a landslide of... of uh, um, analytical work for the for the lab so it's, it's created a backup and it's uh, one of the, the offshoots of uh, having a, a long down period where the, the labs all scale back and not just labs but other associated uh, businesses that rely on 
expiration. And when it starts up again, this always happens. There's a, a crush at the at the services level, and you have to find a way through it. Fantastic. Jason, before I let you go, can we speak a bit to the rest of the portfolio? Because, you know, with gold being where it's at, silver where it's at, and where it's likely headed, which I believe is higher, there there's going to be a premium for quality projects and quality teams um, with, with talented and experienced technical people. Alianza is not short um on either of those and so can you just speak for those to those that are new to this story about the rest of the portfolio and kind of what's there yeah so uh you know speaking of silver we uh we have our 100 percent owned holding uh high-grade silver project in the kino district of the yukon which uh, we were just this morning discussing a uh, potential program what that might look for look like up there uh, we have the luxury of time, uh, even though it's the Yukon, we have good road access. And uh, I know of programs that have, uh, have run right to, uh, right to the end of November up there. So we have, uh, we have that luxury there. So we're putting together a plan for, for Halding. Um, that, uh, that's a really exciting, if you remember, we had a, discovered a new vein system there last year. With, uh, and we're targeting high-grade, you know, uh, hundreds of ounces or sorry hundreds of uh, grams silver over over meters width like they see at the the, the Kino Hill deposits uh, which uh, Alexco Resources is actually just in the, the the last stages of getting their mining operation up and running up there so that's a really neat one for us we've got another high grade silver project in the Yukon at the southern uh, border with uh, British Columbia um, just north of the uh, Midway Silver Tip mine that um, Coor is operating. We've got a, a, a an agreement with them where Coor will be doing a small sort of reconnaissance program, uh, probably later this month. Uh, on that, reopening some old trenches that were running four and five hundred grams silver. Hmm. Uh, so that's a that's a, another really neat project for us. We've got uh, high grade gold in northern British Columbia at uh, at our um, KRL project and. And then our most recent acquisition is uh, in Colorado at uh, Twin Canyon, where we're also looking at maybe uh, expanding that program. We've been doing a, a soil reconnaissance soil survey there that um, we may uh, continue some of that work, but also do some uh, do some sampling underground at the old Charlene mine, which is sort of the centerpiece of the project. So uh, just looking at, you know, maybe ramping up some of those exploration efforts as well. So it's... Um, you know, here we are in August, but it's we still have a lot of uh, work ahead of us uh, uh, in the remainder of this year. So, and that's not including all the sort of the new stuff we're looking at as well. A lot of year left, Jason. Thank you so much for that thorough update. I appreciate the time. Thank you, Gerardo.